evening and welcome to Tinkering with Etkelar. This week, a month, uh, quarter, I finally managed to get through another large-scale project. A real down-to-earth analog PAL vectorscope. Now that leads to several questions. What is a vectorscope? Why do I need one? And some of you might even wonder, what is PAL? Or what the hell is even analog? I might not be able to answer all of these questions right here and now, but I'll try. First off, a vectorscope is a way of visualizing and measuring the color information that is encoded on an analog video signal, in this case PAL. It is used to adjust them for proper color encoding. I needed one to adjust the color references in my test pattern generator. I was looking for a device that could do both PAL and NTSC, but true multi-standard ones are rare. This one is a PAL unit, a Tektronix 521A, with an NTSC vector button, whatever that implies. It arrived well packaged in a box, okay. Before turning it on, I'll do a full tune-up recapping and in-depth cleaning. I rather not have anything blow up in my face. The power socket is a bit unusual, so I'd have problems connecting it to mains anyhow. Oh, and the power switch is a bit um, wobbly. My version seems to be what was sold as the rack mount option. It has all the hardware attached, but I'm missing the stationary parts of the rails. So I'll get rid of those. I start the serious disassembly with the tube. Glass parts are not good to keep around during poking and prodding for hidden screws. The circuit boards are held in place by plastic clips. Quite a few of those have broken off already and since there are quite high voltages involved, I rather replace them all. A bit of OpenSCAD magic provides replacements. About 50 of them. That print took a bit. I made sure the layer lines are supporting the tension involved so they don't snap on me. The high voltage section is enclosed in a plastic case. I need to desolder some connections here to gain access to the two PCBs inside. The lower one has some electrolytics on it. Also, note that the 275V DC rail is still classified as low voltage in the circuit diagram, so I'm getting quite a bit worried about what counts as high voltage in here. The main selection buttons are friction fit to the switches and came off mostly ok. I said mostly. The channel AB selection ones needed brute force. Removing the front panel. 
almost all the controls are soldered to the wire loom here, the input level adjustment controls are screwed to the front panel from behind, but there are some trimmer caps across two of these screws. Also, the calibration pots don't seem to come out. Some desoldering is needed. And there is almost always one screw that won't budge. This one required quite a bit of Dremel action to take the hint. The potentiometers for the calibration levels are locked in with some grub screws. Hmm, yes, that one is certainly stuck. Another case for the Dremel. The wire loom runs through the base plate in several locations. Unless I want to start cutting that apart, I think this is as far as I can go. The rack handles are quite yucky. The coating is flaking off in places. Some sanding and painting is called for. Speaking of which, most of the other parts are also a bit banged up and need a fresh coat of paint. The front panel and CRT bezel are a dark shade of grey. Sanding off the rough bits and going over it with two coats of fresh paint. I found a can of paint that was at least close to the bluish hue. Slightly brighter though, but still, fresh paint will look so much better than this scuffed up case. The mains connector was, as mentioned, weird. I decided to put in a regular modern one instead. The existing hole provides ample space but it needs a few new screw holes. And eventually, someday, maybe, a new cover. The selection switches get a bit of fresh grease. Yes, those are way smoother now. The phase adjustment knobs were a problem though. Phase A would work somehow, but I needed a wrench to even slightly turn phase B. Not good. These should turn like potentiometers. They are actually 360 degree rotating transformers. The grease must have gunked up in them. A good clean and fresh grease later, they turn fine again. All the potentiometers get a good thorough cleaning, as does every switch. Only the trim pots on the PCB are off limits for now, since they will only be adjusted once anyhow. No smooth action required there. I'll tackle them, if they make any problems. The potentiometers that carry high voltage that is, CRT signals, are mounted with quite a bit of spacing and insulation to the case. Good. But the plastic has become brittle over time, so I needed to add some glue here and there. There is one rather weird control in that thing. It is labeled Calibrated Phase and features a plus minus 15 degree scale that is printed on a tape measure like metal strip and driven via a gear. Since I had no idea what it does, I just cleaned it and didn't touch any of the parts within. 
seems to be an adjustable capacitor and some coils, it will play a major part later on. The BNC connectors go in next. Some of them have ground taps, some don't. Weird and foreboding. Soldering back the high voltage transformer and tidying up that box again. Now on to the assembly phase. Putting the back panel in first. All these power transistors need a home after all. Adding new thermal paste and connecting them back to the wire loom. The mains transformer is up next, double checking the reference pictures and schematics to get the wires right. And of course, replacing the mains switch. I found one with the same design in my stash. Replacing all the electrolytics on the PCBs. Connecting up the fuse board next and checking to see if I get the right voltages out of the transformer. Yes, seems good. Adding the main DC filter caps back. Good thing that I found ones in almost the same size, so I can reuse the brackets. Front panel stuff is next. There are some adjustment pots hidden inside two sliding doors and their cover plates need a bit of adjustment so they don't bind up. One of the worst parts was to screw in the sliding switches on that plate again. <laughs> no space to hold anything, much less thread a nut on the screw the size of a toothpick. Now that the front panel is attached again, I can add and mount the CRT case. It's starting to look like a scope again. After the CRT case, I can finally add the front panel cover and mount the potentiometers 
adjust all the spacings so nothing drags or binds up. Nice! Last step, add all the PCBs back and connect the wire loom. Sometimes the pictures I took just weren't enough, since the wires occasionally have three similar colors right next to each other. The circuit diagram and continuity tester helped in those cases. And now that everything is connected again, pop in new fuses, the ones that came with it were busted, and power on. Good! Nothing emitted smoke or went bang! I couldn't find the factory calibration guide for the 521 model, but the 521 is close enough to it, so it has to do. Starting off by checking the voltages, including the anode voltage, 3.8 kV indeed. The high voltage probe paid off again. The Graticule lights are a problem. I might convert it to orange LEDs eventually, but right now the separation between vector and luminance graticule is non-existent. The lights for the luminance one have covers that became brittle and broke off over time, so light leaks into the vector one. Hmm. I stuck a bit of aluminium foil to the inside of the separator instead. This should also reflect a bit more light outwards. Fiddly work, but it does the trick. Now I have one or the other graticule illuminated. The next step would be to adjust the beam focus, but mm, there is no beam. Uh oh. Please don't be a broken CRT. A bit of troubleshooting later, I found that the CRT heater circuit is open. Again. What is it with me and CRT heaters? I had to open up the high voltage transformer again. The one odd extra winding turns out to be the heater. And... Whoops! Yes. Indeed, wireless technology is not going to work here. After putting everything back together, I can now see a trace. Yay! Adjusting the focus and moving on. The adjustments kind of worked, but for some reason it took about a minute or two for the beam to properly focus after powering on. I figured, well, the oscillator might need some warm-up, no big deal. And then I arrived at a step where the trimmers just wouldn't provide me enough range to properly adjust the setting. Troubleshooting number two. With the scope pictures I traced back the signals and found the internal reference frequency signal to be quite low after the amplifier. It took ages to find out that one of the ground taps on the BNC sockets that did not have a matching ground trace on the PCB actually provides the ground 
back into the PCB for the final amplifier transistor. Who designed this? Anyhow, I got a good carrier frequency now and can start all over again. And after a sleepless night, I'm almost done. Only the calibrated phase control needs adjustment. It is there to provide a way of measuring color phase differences. The absolute value is irrelevant, as the signal passes through the 360 degree phase controls anyway, but the indicated number of plus minus degrees should match the screen readout precisely. And here's where things went south again. I started the alignment procedure by turning the controls in one extreme position, as called for by the alignment procedure. And it seems that the scope lost color sync to the test signal. Darn! What am I talking about? It is a bit complicated, maybe I'll do a PAL color signal explanation video eventually. But the gist is that the color signal is encoded in a way that requires a reference frequency in the receiver, the vector scope in this case, to be perfectly aligned or in phase with the encoded one. There is a small reference signal in the video, called the color burst, which provides that sync info. And it did no longer sync here. I spent three days tracing signals, comparing reference scope pictures and even removing transistors to check for improvements, until I finally found out what was wrong. The second to last step of the calibration guide called for an NTSC test pattern, and after reading up on the final step, the phase control thing, I completely forgot to change it back to PAL. No wonder the sync was way off. F wasted several days hunting down a non-issue. But I did learn a lot about color burst signals and oscillators. Now that the signals add up again, I can finally tune in the plus minus 15 degree adjustments. Works like a charm. Closing up the covers on this one, another device saved and ready for use. And that's it for this episode, I hope you enjoyed it, see you next time! The existing hole provided was... Bam, 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 bam. The existing hole provides ample space. <laughs>